Now we turn to the meaning of it all, the end of this Trump era. Let's start with the facts. President-elect Joe Biden is the winner of this election. Donald Trump is the loser of this election. Donald Trump got fewer votes than Biden, just as he got fewer votes than Clinton. Indeed, Donald Trump is now the only president to ever lose the total vote twice, both times he ran for president. And while it was not immediately visible on that unfolding election night, with results trickling in for an election where Americans shifted how they vote for this pandemic, and while, yes, it also took several days to get all those ballots in and to report out those careful projections state by state at Kornacki's big board, in the end, it was not even close. Biden beat Trump decisively with roughly 4 million more votes, with over 50 percent to Trump's 47, with an electoral college margin of multiple states, which shuts down even the long shot ploy that some sort of recount or lawsuit or something in a single state might drag this out. This is clear to everyone. Former Vice President Joe Biden has been elected president of the United States. Winning the White House and denying President Trump a second term. Rachel, the screen uh, right underneath you uh, says Joe Biden elected 46th president. You can see here there's music playing. People are dancing, cheering, lots of Biden hair signs. This is a great day for everyone, great day for America. We've created a better opportunity and a better world for our children. And that means a lot today. Donald Trump entered the White House as an unpopular and divisive figure, America's second choice, vaunted into power with our strange electoral college system in 2016, and he now leaves the same way, the unpopular loser of the total vote again and of the electoral college. In one of Shakespeare's most iconic monologues from the 420-year-old play As You Like It, there are those lines that apply here, all the world's a stage. All the men and women merely players, and one man in his time plays many parts. A speech that suggests the last stage is a return to the first, when a man in his old age becomes like a baby again, facing his, quote, second childishness and mere oblivion. That's Trump right now, tonight, leaving as he arrived, facing a loss that cements his presidency as an aberrant and unpopular chapter in our history as he enters his own kind of political oblivion. Okay, so what are we to make of it all? If Trump came in on a fluke, never earned majority support, not in two national elections, not in national approval, what was this all about? Can we just forget about him and what he wrought? Can America just say, you know, hey, we want to say and believe we're better than this, we rejected this, let's move on? Or... Do we need a reckoning with how far Donald Trump got here, which shows how far we have to go? I want to tell you tonight, it matters how we approach these questions. And I want to tell you what I think. On one hand, there's no reason to overestimate Donald Trump's support when he lost, when he is the loser of this race, when he has been clearly rejected. It would be inaccurate and dilute the victory to overdo that. And sometimes some Democrats get in their own way on these things. But on the other hand, I don't think there's any good reason to think that Trumpism is some kind of historic, a historical, rare anomaly in American life. In fact, over the past four years, we did hear people, sometimes these comfortable D.C. people, blithely claim this is not who we are. But America, Trumpism is who we are in some significant ways. This is who so many Americans support. And after four years of seeing Trump in action, removing any possible doubt people might have had, Trump went from roughly 63 million votes last time to 71 million votes this time. He grew his share of the vote among certain groups as well, including wealthy voters and Latino voters. Trump won outright among men in America. It's women of color who powered Biden's margin of victory. Trump won outright and decisively among white voters, 57 percent to 42 percent. So we need to remember that as well. Anytime you walk into a room of white people who are registered to vote, statistically, most of them back Donald Trump after all this. And finally, I want to show you this in one of the most telling breakdowns for the future. 
Donald Trump still broke even with Biden among the traditional electorate, the majority of Americans who had voted before. When you just look at that part, they split 49 to 50. Biden won this thing by dominating among first-time voters by 34 points. And those new voters are 13% of this electorate. So to put it a different way, Donald Trump could have won this race if those 19 million new and young voters didn't register and vote for the first time over these past few weeks. In the years ahead, I can tell you whether those new voters keep voting, it could completely control our politics more than anything else. So both things can be true. America has rejected Trump. More people voted against him than for him in 2016, and a majority voted him out in 2020. But second, Trump tapped into broad American support, and he enlarged it over this time. Consider that an informed endorsement of what he stands for. we got to face that, too. It's quite obvious Trump didn't create or begin the bigotry and anger that he tapped into any more than he wrote, Make America Great Again. That slogan was plagiarized from Ronald Reagan, just as Trump's performative politics came right out of his reality show experience. He just played this part. He got the script from around the nation. He got it from the rest of America, from our living history, from our struggle to ever try to truly achieve justice and to overcome. Which brings us back to another set of classic bars from the Bard on this topic of standing up to a would-be autocrat. I bet you know the line from Julius Caesar, the fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars but in ourselves. We got to look into ourselves. In a year when so many stood up to America's ongoing injustices, it is perfectly fine to forget Trump. The loser of elections are often quickly forgotten. But we should not forget Trumpism, its causes, its anger, its growing support this week as Americans face another difficult chapter. Even as many celebrate the relief of putting Trump behind them, you know, the streets were full of this revelry and the honking and the dancing and the singing to anthems that had imagined this day. One song in particular has been playing on a loop in many parts of America, FDT, which boils down to basically forget Donald Trump, where the late artist Nipsey Hussle contrasts how Obama offered hope as Trump spends his dad's money on the vote, adding, quote, I'm from a place where you probably can't go, speaking for a people that you probably ain't know. Pressure built up, and it's probably going to blow. And along with the rapper YG, he quotes Tupac's celebration of American diversity, quote, it wouldn't be the USA without Mexicans. And if it's time to team up, let's begin. Black love, brown pride in the sets again. White people feel the same as my next of kin. End quote. How about that? Donald Trump exploited division for his own political survival. But it is this diverse teamwork that led to his political extension. So just as both things can be true, we can all do two things at once. We can remember exactly how we got here, but also forget Donald Trump.